Hi guys. I'm excited about this new series of workshops that we're doing together. And I was setting up my phone and right before I hit the lag button, I thought, you know what? I need to show you guys my background before I turn this around because I have what I need set up over here to my left, but it's gorgeous in New England today. And it's kind of funny. We're talking about holidays and I'm starting off by showing you our fall leaves, but I've decided this year that my word for the holidays is absolutely going to be intentional. And already, only a few days into thinking this way, it feels really good. So maybe this is the new Michelle, thinking about the holidays when there are still gorgeous foliage on the trees. I mean, I don't know, it makes things, I already feel like it's going to be much less stressed this holiday season and more simple, honestly. It's kind of funny. Preparing ahead of time can actually help me make things more simple. Like it kind of doesn't seem that way. It seems like I, I've always been the person that's like, oh, I want everything to be simple. So I put it off, but that makes it harder. And it tends to make me get more extravagant about things because it's the last minute and I'm going, oh shoot, I didn't get gifts for this person or this person. And I haven't yet decorated and the tree isn't up <laughs> and it just gets more elaborate and overwhelming. Whereas if I start thinking about it early, I can plan. I'm keeping the decorations simple. I'm being very intentional about my gift giving, etc. So this is our first of four workshops. And today we're going to be talking about being intentional with our gift giving and keeping it simple. So let me turn you around. I'm so glad so many of you are joining in. Say hi, please. Let me know where you're from if you'd like. And definitely, please let me know your biggest stress during the holidays, because I think we all have different things. Some of us get really, really stressed about the decorations, right? And some of us go insane over gifts. So what, what's your biggest stress? What keeps you up at night during December? <laughs> I want to know. Um, okay. So I'm just going to go over. I don't even know how many I have in my list here. Five, five things to help us keep gift giving simple. And then I have a show and tell here. I have some things I'm going to show you to give you some ideas. I sat down a few days ago when I decided this is it. I'm going to be intentional with a simple holiday this year. And I created a gift guide based on things I'm going to be giving people and things I'm really excited about to give people. So please, when this live is over, if you're live right now, as this is showing, if you're catching the replay, go for it. Start commenting the word holiday. If you're live right now, wait till the live is over and comment the word holiday because I won't see it if you comment now. Um, and I will send you the gift guide and I will also send you anything else we're talking about and just some things I have written about simple holidays, uh, decorating in a farmhouse Christmas, simple style, and six wait that, what was the other one? Ways to keep it simple. Oh, um, gingerbread ideas, simple, really fun gingerbread ideas. Anyway, I'll send you all of that. Just comment the word holiday. Okay. So the five things, first of all, when you're gift giving, obviously you need to consider the recipient and think about what do they really like to do? What gets them excited? Um, in fact, there is a gift giving rule of three that I kind of made up because there are a lot of official ones out there, but I wanted to keep it simple. And I decided for every recipient this year, I'm thinking of three things about that person. What do they want? What do they really need and what do they do, right? Is that my three things? I better check my list. Want, need, and do. Yeah. So I'm just now starting this, going through my list of recipients and thinking those three things. What do they want? What do they need? What do they do? And then I'm trying to think of simple things that match that person to give them as a gift. So I think that's really helping me this year. Want, need, and do. I took things off of there that a lot of other people consider like, what do they like to wear? What do they like to read? Like I wanted to keep it as simple as I could. Plus in my family, reading is prolific and I have no idea what books everybody already owns. So I would never buy a book for somebody in my family. Um, next, make a list, create a list of your recipients. And here's the thing, do it in advance, start now. Because like I said, for me, I go excessive if I wait and put it off too long. Start now, 
and keep it simple. Make a list. Third thing, consider homemade gifts. And I'm not going to say anything more about that because we're going to do another workshop just on that topic, but it's not going to be your, your typical, here's some homemade gifts you can make and tell you to put cookies in a jar. That's not what I'm going to do. We're going to talk about ways to think about what's important to you, what's important to your recipient and make something extremely simple in the sense that it's not hard for you for homemade gifts that they're going to love. So make sure you join me for that workshop. And I'll send you the schedule, by the way, to the workshops and when they're going to be live. I hope you can join me live for all of them uh, if you comment holiday. And I will send you replays. I know that life is life and you can't always join me live. So I'll make sure to always send you replays if you get on the holiday list. Okay, next one. So that's three, right? And the next one, four, keep it meaningful. Keep focus on gifts that are purposeful. You might see some of the things I'm sharing with you and think it maybe is a little boring, you might think, <laughs> but it's my intention this year to be intentional and to keep things meaningful and simple. So if it's something that they're gonna unwrap, and you know, sometimes I do this, I give a gift for that initial, oh, cause you wanna see them excited. But then five minutes later they realize, I, I don't need this. It's just gonna be cluttering my home. You know, it's, it's what, I'll never use it. I, I'm done. I'm not giving gifts for the initial, oh, and then it goes to the landfill a month later or gets re-given. I really want to give things that are meaningful and useful. So that's my focus this year. And the fifth point, this is important, guys. It's not something you're going to usually see on a list of how to keep your gift giving simple. But I wanted to make sure I told you. So everybody listen, right? Give yourself some slack. You are doing a good job already. I mean, here you are watching this and thinking ahead of time already. I know you're doing an amazing job at making the holidays special this year. And special doesn't mean fancy. Special doesn't mean expensive. Special doesn't mean extravagant. Special means intentional. Spending time with people you love. And the gift can be simple. So if you were coming on this live in this workshop, hoping to get some instructions on an amazing handmade quilted thing you can make <laughs> or a list of $300 special appliances that people will love. I'm sorry, that's not what this is about, <laughs> but please definitely comment holiday because I do want to send you the whole gift guide that I put together a few days ago because it really has me excited. Um, I have a few other things here. This is just a little bit of what you might see on the gift guide. But the idea is, I think what I'm going to be able to do here is to think about what's those three things, you know, about your recipient, Oops. what they want, what they need, and what they like to do and figure out kind of, you know, almost categorize your recipients. Maybe you have recipients that are gardeners and love growing things. If so, this is a gift that they will never forget that will keep on giving for a decade or more. This I cannot recommend enough, and it's not something anybody's ever going to think about to put on their Christmas list. Nobody's ever going to think to tell you, oh, you know, I could use a soil test kit. And you're never going to think about, oh, I could give my daughter a soil test kit. <laughs> but I kid you not, if you have you know, an adult child, a parent, a friend who either is just starting out gardening or has been a gardener for decades, this is something most gardeners don't think about, and it is a game changer. So... Your initial response when they open it might not be, oh, I'm so excited. It might be, oh, but I guarantee you for years to come, they will be thinking about you and this gift. So I can't recommend enough. I'll send you a link to this. Make sure you comment holiday because I have a discount code for you too. It's a great deal. Great fit. Love it. And something else that they would never think about if they like growing food, especially if they grow food in a climate like where we live here in New England, where you can't grow for such a long time. Sprouts. Guys, this gift gets people excited. I gave sprouts to some of my daughters years ago. They still talk about it. It's just so fun. And if they like growing food, even if they hate growing food, honestly, they'll be like, oh, I can grow this kind of food. It's so simple. I'll send you my guide to sprouting and I'll send you details about this. It's actually a garden. You can give them a garden and they grow their sprouts in a tray. Guys, it takes three days for most sprouts to grow. Three days from when you start them 
until you have food to put on a sandwich, on a salad, so good in your smoothies. And so you fill that and then you can do layers like this. I love this. This sits in my corner of my kitchen. You don't even see it because I put it back in the corner and pull it out when I need to water the sprouts once a day, all winter long. I'm growing food. Love it. And like I said, it's a gift that's so unique that people really wouldn't think about asking for. They'll love it for years to come. If the person is someone who is very non-toxic and very concerned about that kind of thing, or maybe you have some daughters like I do, I have a daughter who loves you know, makeup and, and she's not like a, you wouldn't even know she's wearing it, it's very natural, but she really loves having good makeup, all of that. She doesn't really care about toxic though. You know, you guys, <laughs> you guys have this situation where you really, really, really know something's important and the kids just don't think it's important. So, you know, it's just the way life is. <laughs> but I would still give this to her because it's a really great serum that she would love and I'm giving her something non-toxic and she doesn't even know or care. But, but if you have someone on your list who really gets concerned about that, this serum is amazing. I was never a serum person. Like I don't even wear makeup. Once in a while I put like a cream on if it's dry in the winter, my skin's dry. But this I use daily. It has tallow in it. It does amazing things for your skin. I love it, love it, love it. I will send you a code to save on this too. And you might have 10 people on your list who would love this. It's also a great stocking stuffer, but it can be a gift. You know what? Something I meant to say back on our list of five suggestions, no matter how simple the gift is, if you're giving them a note to go with it, the note can really be the value. Spend some time writing notes to people that you can put on their gifts. And I'm not talking a novel. It can literally be a sentence or two. But something really special that means something that can really that that can be the gift itself right um <clears throat> if you have somebody on your list who loves preserving food or who loves growing food and they don't really know how to preserve it or maybe they don't have any food they grow but they go to the farmer's market and maybe they would think this is cool you can start them on preserving food with this very simple little kit all they need is a mason jar you can actually get a kit that includes the mason jar or you could give them a mason jar with it just need a mason jar and some food and some salt and they can start fermenting food so good. And I've written a ton about this. You can send them to my blog and they can find out how to ferment so many things. It's so easy. And this only takes, it depends on the food and your taste anywhere from like a week to three weeks. Um, but you can let it go for like years of ferment. It's really cool. Really, really cool stuff. And this would be a really unique gift that would make them think about you for a long time to come and fall in love with food preservation. What about if they are kind of a person who likes to buy in bulk or they love to bake? So they love to have a lot of good baking things on hand, or maybe they're into just food storage, which I am. That's why I have this bucket behind me. It is such a fun gift to give somebody a food grade bucket. By the way, so many people are joining. Hi guys, it's so good to see you. Has anybody told me, I don't think anybody's told me they're stressed for the holidays. Maybe nobody has any stress for the holidays. Okay, I know that's not true. Let me know guys, what keeps you up at night during the holiday season in a bad way? <laughs> okay, food grade bucket and these lids. These lids are so cool. I love these lids. They come in all different colors. I have a whole rainbow of colors down in my root cellar and basement. And I have so many different things stored away that I, I go down there, I bet you two or three times a week to get something out of my food storage. This is salt, but I'll show you the lid. Yes, I have a lot of salt. Salt is something that, guys, you can't, I can't grow it, right? And I'll never be able to grow it. <laughs> and it keeps forever. It doesn't go bad in any way, shape or form. So I buy it in the big, is it 50 pounds? I think it's a 50 pound bag. It's a really big bag. And I store it this way. But this lid is what I wanted to show you. This amazing seal and it screws on and off. You know how if, you, if you've ever dealt with these buckets and the usual lids that they come with, they make me angry and I go crazy trying to get the lid off and get it back on right. They screw on so easily and they have the seal so your food is going to stay fresh. I love it. If you want to give anybody a 50 pound bag of salt, that would be a cool gift, but you don't have to do that. You can fill it with things like sprouts and this sprout garden. Or you can just give them the bucket and put a note inside. Seriously, it was a really cool gift. 
Um, and maybe you have somebody on your list who loves to bake or be in the kitchen. Maybe it's your husband and he loves to grill. This is a really cool thing for hubbies. It comes, you can get it single like this, or you can also get a gift set. I'm thinking about getting a couple gift sets and dividing them up as stocking or hostess gifts. These are smoked salt. We have a smoker, but a few months ago, Bill ran out of the chips, the wood chips that he uses. He uses different like varieties of wood. I was gonna say flavors of wood, um, like cherry and hickory for different foods that we smoke. And he ran out of chips and I thought, oh, if I had some smoke salt on hand, we could at least have the taste of smoking on our steak or our, our um, ribs that we're gonna cook. And you know, the smoker's out of commission right now, but we could still have the taste of smoke. So you don't have to have a smoker to have that amazing flavor. And they come in different varieties, such a fun, unique gift. So that is on my gift guide. Also, this season salt is the bomb. Like, oh my gosh, who wouldn't love a big opening, this amazing big bulk size of a seasoning that they are going to love using all year long. This is a really great one too, lemon salt, the pepper, gar no, garlic pepper is amazing. I have those linked on my gift guide too. Great gifts for somebody who loves cooking or someone who maybe doesn't and it makes cooking a whole lot easier, so, okay. I think that's everything I wanted to tell you. That's my whole show and tell. Um, so think about what they want, what they need and what they do. Make your list early so you have a budget and you're not doing the crazy things. Keep it simple and be intentional. It makes a world of difference. Um, my favorite Christmas ever, it's kind of crazy, was the gift of the year that I literally had almost no gifts for anyone. And I was planning on bringing this up. Um, my mom had passed away the last day of November and it was sudden yet not, um, but it was a matter of three weeks. I was in the ICU with her and she, she passed away. And it, my dad was of course beside himself and we brought him, they lived in Delaware, we brought him up to New Hampshire with us and just tried to kind of just have some downtime, recover. I hadn't seen my daughters for those whole three weeks that I was down in Delaware. Um, anyway, all of a sudden we real, I realized it was Christmas. Like I, I didn't even think about it. Didn't even, it was the day before and I went, it's Christmas. Now the girls had put up a little tree and put up a few little decorations, but that was it. And dad turned to me on Christmas Eve and he said, I didn't get any presents for the girls, meaning my daughters. I said, you know what? I have a few things I stuck away like back in the summer to put in their stockings. Let's go see what I have. I didn't even remember what it was. I had to pull the box out. And there my dad and I sat wrapping, we sat on my bed, wrapping simple little things, a pair of socks, uh, lip gloss, a thing of nail polish, like just that and, that, and that was the presence. That was the actual, like we didn't do stockings, that was the presence. And my dad passed them out to each daughter, you know, and so the presence took like five minutes and that was it. But it didn't matter. Like it didn't matter because our values and our priorities were totally different that year and we had full focus on what was important and we wanted to intentionally be spending time together. So we decided to spend the rest of the day making a gingerbread house. One, one gingerbread house. And that's what we did. And it was so much fun. I mean, I can't even relive, I, I can't even tell you how relaxing and good, so good that day was because we were intentional with spending time together. It was just us, there was no TV, there was Christmas music, and a whole lot of baking and a whole lot of mess. And in fact, now that I think about it, I have an article, I'll share that with you, Comet Holiday, that tells you all the directions on how to make a gingerbread house and make it look like a farm. It's really a fun article. Um, but whether that's what you wanna do or not a farm theme, you could use the recipe to make a fun gingerbread house. It's super simple. And talk about being intentional. That's what the holidays are about, right? Just intentional time with each other. So I didn't mean to get into that. I meant to keep this really short, <laughs> but I hope I hope maybe that encouraged you some. So be sure when this is over to comment holiday. I saw a lot of you here live are commenting holiday. If you could please come back and comment because I won't see that once I stop this video. Um, tell me what your biggest stress is. 
and you can talk through that in the comments. And um, I hope you can join me for the next three lives. I'm excited about what's coming. I'll send you the schedule, what is planned. You know what? I don't have it in front of me. I could just tell you, but I don't have it in front of me. So please comment live and I'll send that to you. And one of the workshops, I'm bringing on a friend who I think you're gonna love. It's gonna be so encouraging for you. So until next time, guys, have a great afternoon.